Hey friends, skaters, welcome back. So what we're going to get into now is I'm going to take you through the CTFD server that we've got. In the last two videos, I've shown you how to spin up an EC2 instance running Ubuntu and installing the CTF server on an Nginx server. But your server is now on the public internet. So you kind of want to lock this down now. What you could have done is made it privately and then put it onto the EC2 instance, but it was just easy for smaller stuff like this to just do it all in one go. In the next video after this, we're going to create a subdomain using Cloudflare and then point it to that using SSL certificates and everything as well. But if you find this useful, please like and subscribe. Show the support down in the link below if you can. But let's jump into this. So we can see here we've got the setup page. So we're going to do a CTF YouTube demo. And just give it a brief description. Uh, demo of CTF D setup. Go next. Okay, so from here we can go T mode or user mode. Uh, I've run a CTF before where I ran it in T mode. That was pretty good because you can track individual users. If you're running this remotely and you know everyone's kind of like sitting at home. Uh, and you don't want them to be in teams and you want it to be super competitive, you can just make it user mode. In the workshop coming up, I've just made it user mode, but we'll go with team mode. Administration, so again, like make sure this is secure for you. But uh, I'm just gonna put my details in here and then make it super basic, because again, I'm blowing this away. Don't wanna subscribe. So uh, logo, Banner, so after this point, I haven't figured out how to install a banner, which I think is this part up here, the whole part. Um, but I could install a logo and small icon after I've done it. For mine, I've changed it. Um, the small icon is this favicon, so it's this thing up the top here next to the name. You can actually change that. Uh, theme, core, core beta, you can change the color. We're just gonna leave this as default for now. You can play with it for your stuff. Start date and time. I skipped this at this point. Uh, so my machine is actually set to UTC at the moment. This is in UTC, but it's not clear here of what time zone this is in, but when you're in it in the admin panel, it is. So we're gonna skip that. Um, Major League Cyber Integration. I did try and play around with this a bit, but I couldn't really get it to work and it broke my setup. So um, I won't go into it now, but if you want to try and set this up, go ahead. But usually you're running this locally or for an event or something. So you're going to have your own promotion stuff. And then finish. And it's pretty basic. So um, I'll save my credentials. And then I'll show you the admin dashboard. So um, as the competition is going on, um, there's going to be like a, a page for, for all this stuff. It's just showing us now because we haven't said anything. So the challenge isn't live. Uh, that was the statistics. You can actually push out notifications um, to users when the event's going on and play a sound so that the users know that something has changed, um, which is really useful if you need to like, if you're not running like alerts on Discord or Slack or something like that, you can run it through the actual web page. Pages, uh, it looks like you can create new pages. Yeah, so we've just got an index page um, which is this main page. Let's see what the options are here. Yeah, so you could give it a new a new page in Markdown. So maybe you want to do a write-up or something on, uh, so say one of your challenges needs like technical information, you want to give some hints, you can write it in Markdown and put it here. Users, obviously we've only got the admin user at the start. Teams, we've got no teams. Uh, users is important. So we can see here actually that we're hidden. You can remove hidden so people can see that you're the admin. Uh, you can also ban users as you're going through. You can set up verification through email for the challenge. Um, I'll show you that as well. Let's have a look at challenges. So challenges, not immediately clear. The first time I ever used CTFD, I tried to create a challenge clicking this and I was like, why isn't this working? This is for um, when you've got challenges, you can highlight this and then edit. And then you can put them either being hidden or change the value of them or change the category. But you want to click here to create a challenge. You've got standard and dynamic. 
So standard uh, is essential. Dynamic is essentially when people try and guess answers, you can take points away from them. Um, that's the difference. So yeah, dynamic value challenges decrease as they receive solves. Uh, the amount of solves, yeah. Uh, so it looks like the amount of points the challenge is worth, the amount of souls. So if someone souls that it, it decreases the value of that challenge. And I, I don't really like that. Standard's okay. Uh, if we go submissions. So this will be um, if you're in teams or the users, you can see the users' submissions and you'll, you'll be able to see their failed submissions and also their successful ones. And you can break it into correct and incorrect. And then config. So this is where you can change your name, description, the theme. So like I said, banners, not here. I don't know where you would change that. Uh, you can account email, uh, email whitelist. So if you're running for your company and you only want people using their work emails to sign up, you can uh, whitelist that here. You can enable a verify emails. Uh, team creation is enabled because we select the team group. This is where you disable it. Set a team size, total number of teams. And amount of submissions allowed per minute. Yeah, so default's 10. So it means like, say your answer was a number uh, and it was like one to 50, then like realistically, people shouldn't be brute forcing answers. You could just make it like, two in case someone does a typo, three, someone does a typo. Pages, uh, yep, Let's skip over that. Now custom fields, again, major league sub, you could do the stuff in here. Maybe if I configured on their actual website, then added it here, it might work. Uh, yep, so this is just challenge visibility. Maybe if you need to change it on the fly, This, yeah, account registration. So this is if you have email registration turned on. Um, for mine, I don't, I'm just gonna allow people in uh, time. So yeah, like I was saying, this is where you can set the time and you can actually set your time zone. So it's set to UTC probably by default because I'm UTC on my computer. Um, or actually it might be default, but it'll show you the local time. Uh, legal, if you want to put in legal stuff in, you can back up. So you can export. This is where you can make it locally. Export this um, and then import the CTF, noting that it'll wipe existing data. Um, but you could import a CTF that you've created locally if you wanted to do it all locally or someone else is doing it and you were just setting up the server, you could do it here. Um, yeah, user mode. Yeah, so caution with this. Or you can reset the whole server. Um, what I'll try and do, so if we go, I think challenges, oh yeah. So cause I haven't, uh, set a time limit, this will display differently. So if I'd set a, a time for when I want this to start, this will just say the CTF hasn't started yet. Um, but it's essentially live for people to sign in. And if we don't have email verification turned on, it'll just allow people to like create individuals, create teams, whatever they want to do. But that's about it. So uh, once I run the workshop, which is a little bit later in the year, and we have the CTF up and running, I'll go through and show you the CTF and I'll do a breakdown of all of our questions that we made and the answers to all those questions. And I'll show you a bit more about the CTF server. But for now, I just wanted to show you the admin setup. So if you've liked the video, please like and subscribe, show some support down in the link below. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video where we're going to go through Cloudflare and how to set up a subdomain and then using SSL certificates, we're going to put that onto our server and um, change it so that we don't have this kind of ugly domain will also be um, in HTTPS and it'll be easy for people to, to navigate to your CTF on the day. But catch us next time.